absolutely. The Retirement Board Social Investment Policy was adopted in 1988. It's been successfully used uh, for issues related to tobacco, to uh, South Africa, most recently to Sudan, and, and basically engaging companies that we publicly held that were tied to support of the government of Sudan. The policy has three levels that, that the board can address the issue, but the underlying issue is always going to be this board acts as a fiduciary for the benefit of all the beneficiaries. First level is to be what we would call uh, an appropriate shareholder, meaning we would vote our proxies. We would not initiate anything, but we would monitor these companies, watch as proxy issues came up at shareholder meetings, and we would bring that back to the board, and we would have the board instruct us how to vote those proxies in an attempt to change their citizenship or their, you know, their social issues that we had concerns over. Second level is if that didn't work, we would become more of an engager, an initiator. We would present potentially a resolution to a shareholder meeting. We would know what the deadlines are to get those in. We would try and gather other plans, public plans that have what similar interests. That? Part, that's that's sure. level two. Level two. So level two is sort of a beyond just being a, a prudent shareholder, we start initiating issues to try and impact the behavior of these companies that we own. If that's not successful, level three would be restrictions. Restrictions from purchasing future shares of these companies. But at the same time, we have contracts and we have an obligation to the beneficiaries that we can't just sell off these assets unless we can find another asset to invest in that would return the same with the same level of risk, comparable uh, return, comparable risk. And that's the duty of the fiduciaries. And so level three is sort of the last level where we basically instruct all of our managers, you cannot purchase any future shares of these, these companies. And then with the companies that we have in the portfolio, the board's responsibility is to make sure that the investment managers prudently manage and with fiduciary concepts in mind, basically find investments to replace those that would provide the same return at the same risk. And so that's, the, the three levels are, are basically vote our proxies and, and, and sort of know what those proxies are for the identified companies. Second level would be to start initiating action beyond just a proxy, we would introduce a resolution, we would write a letter to the board, we would join together with other public plans that had similar interests to try and, and aggregate the impact. If that those two didn't work, then we would move on to restricting the purchase and, and basically trying to disengage ourselves from the investments that we found in the portfolio. And have, have any other plans in California sought to engage to level two yet? On the banking issue? Not that I'm aware of. Could, could I add one point? That all that you said is correct, but for the level three, the managers have the right to petition the board that they not sell the shares. Right, they have to, well, we hold them to the level of, they. we give them benchmarks, and if we buy one hand behind, or one arm behind their back, we can't hold them to a benchmark if we've removed an opportunity. So the investment manager, we work with them to make sure that whatever they're proposing to replace that investment with, that it would be a comparable return, expectation, and comparable risk. I just want to make it clear, even if we go through that, the managers can still, can still petition the board right. that, to not comply with the divestment challenge. I mean, the whole goal is to change behavior. And so, generally speaking, you know, level two is pretty strong because, again, <coughs> if we are holding you know, we're a shareholder. Uh, we're doing the best to try and influence by initiating resolutions and initiating letters to them, telling them, uh, you know, that we would ask them to to uh, change behavior. But again, I don't think there should be a misconception. When you hear about other public plans voting for divestment, that doesn't mean they're selling the stock. They have to go through a process as fiduciaries to make sure that there's a systematic you know, replacement of those stocks or those holdings with, with similar investments that would get the same return at the same risk. So thank you for um, educating us on what the three steps are and how to go about, go about it. I have a couple of follow-up questions. So um, in terms of the, um, the, the, resol the draft resolution, that we're not considering today because it's not agendized, but I'm using the language um, 
I don't think everyone else has seen, has seen the language. I don't think you didn't bring copies, did you? Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any, but, um, oh, I just lost my thought. Um, so uh, the, uh, I could summarize the, what they were asking. There are two, there are two issues or two general areas. One general area was for us to vote proxies on these companies in a particular way, and it dealt with the idea of a CEO being on a board of directors. That is level one. The second was to ask us to send a letter. It was going to be signed by the members of the board who wanted to sign it, signed by me, and we would forward it to the presidents of these three companies, urging them to change their foreclosure policy. That is a level two engagement. And that is where we would need to understand what that action would mean. Uh, they provide a lot of statistics, and I have, I, we have no reason to doubt your statistics, but we have an obligation to make sure that we verify those numbers and that we verify and provide maybe additional information to the retirement board because that's what they need to make a fiduciarily prudent decision. So that's why I say, to say that we can get all that done by the April meeting, I mean, uh, if we get a finalized version of the resolution, we can give you a better idea of how quickly we can get the information together. Uh, I will say that, obviously, I have no vote in this, and what our job is is to do follow the policy, and we are not going to try and, and take any shortcuts on this. Also, I, I think we, we support should. Mr. Myberger's suggestion. <laughs> would, you, would you please restate your suggestion? Yeah, what I'm saying is just present yeah, it. Second. She hasn't yielded she hasn't the floor. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so I actually wanted to also hear, how long has it taken in the past? Um, you, you mentioned that this body clearly has, a, has this, an established um, history of divestment, South Africa, tobacco, Dr. Far. How long did it take to, for the, the, the body to deliberate? How long did it take for staff to do the research? Um, Sudan probably took a period of six months. Six, I would say six to nine months based upon the... Uh, there was, I mean, there was an issue with Sudan, and that was what companies had been identified, and there was a, a group that was presenting a list of companies, but it wasn't sort of a widely accepted. Mm -hmm. So a part of the, the delay in the board having a list of companies that they could even consider to engage through the divestment <coughs> was finalizing the list. But I mean, the process of first researching, verifying that in fact we, we even have those holdings, I mean, here it's pretty clear. We have, you know, three named banks. However, as been pointed out, there's been a lot of acquisitions uh, <coughs> by these banks over the years. So there's a lot of backtracking to find out, you know, what holdings could be under Wachovia, what holdings could be under different names. I mean, we presented that material to Commissioner Meiberger. We have a snapshot as of December 31st, what we identify as our public holdings. And so that is part of the work that we've been working on with Commissioner Meiberger at his request. To, to be able to put in the resolution. So once we see what the resolution is, because there's a different level if it is we're going to initiate level two and initiate letters, we need to draft proposed letters that we would write to make sure that there were letters that the board could sign, legally sign, or the executive director could sign that was through a, a deliberation. So it's not an attempt to delay, it's an attempt to finalize what's being asked. There's no way to, to respond to Commissioner Meiberger's uh, suggestion that we consider it at two different levels and have the board decide. That potentially could be more research than we need to do. So for me, I was just trying to get an established kind of like a timeline of what, how, realistically, um, how long would it take? We don't want to be I understand the sense of urgency, but we need to be thoughtful um, well, and, I would say that and responsible we, yeah. with, <laughs> with, you know, with our duties and our responsibilities of, in, in honoring the mission of, of, of this board. So you, so I, I just heard you with Darfaro's uh, six months. Do you have? Let me clarify that. If, if the board would say to go at level one, we report back to the board the progress on level one. And, if, and, and, and it could be a period of time where we would come forward and say it might be time for the board if it was their wish to consider level two and we would escalate it to a level two where we start to initiate the shareholder action or communications with the board. So the period of time for them to decide that it was 
socially prudent for them not to invest in companies that were, you know, Haiti, the government of Sudan, didn't take a period of months. But it was a clear resolution and a clear, clearly researched due diligence process by staff to identify the social, the investment risk, the business risk, and the social implications of the board adopting to put it through the social investment policy. I mean, I can't say today that if we had a finalized version that we would not have time to prepare it for the April 10th meeting. What's there? April 10th meeting. Okay. Uh, I mean, our, our mailing deadlines, there's Sunshine Act requirements that we post to 72 hours, but we generally try and get it out at least six or seven days ahead. So again, a deadline for final version of our materials is going to be around the 1st of April, if not earlier. So we only have a couple of weeks to finalize whatever the resolution is that, that Commissioner Byron wants to bring to the board and, and do the due diligence. This is my last question slash statement, and then I'll let someone else speak. Um, is it, um, you, in your remarks, you, you, you noted how um, it was unusual that my river was the, was the one bringing the resolution to the board. So are you telling me it's more customary that the um, proposed draft come from the public? No. The board rules say that a board member can request an item to be calendared, and that there's really no provision in the board rules that a member of the public could request that an item be calendared without a board member supporting it. The board policy then says that with the direction of the president of the board as well as input from staff on how long it will take to prepare the item, it will be calendared within a reasonable period of time. So what I say is in the 14 years <coughs> that I've worked with the retirement system, this is the first time I've known of a board member wanting to prepare their own board item. For example, when Commissioner Macris requested the firearms, he basically directed staff and, and President uh, Haskin Jordan instructed staff to work with him to draft the board item. And so that's why I say it was a little and how long did that take? That a board member, and, and we not knowing what the final resolution looks like, can't begin working on it.